Hello everyone, my name is David Spooner, I'm with uh, Mindbend Studios and Angular Digital. And uh, today I wanted to show you, uh, give you some insight on my life cycle animation, uh, my life cycle concept animation. Um, just wanted to kind of show you um, how I did things. Um, it's not necessarily a guide, which is why I didn't want to make a tutorial on it, because I, I honestly, if I were to do it again, I would do it, uh, do several things differently. I'm just going to kind of point out um, what I did to help uh, help sell the shot and help it look, look pretty good, uh, even though there's a lot of problems with it that I had to try to overcome. So right from the get-go, here is the life cycle and here's the ribbons coming out of it. Um, the materials um, that are added onto these ribbons are pretty simple, but also very powerful. Um, it's just a... solid color in both the luminance and the color channel, but transparency is set to a gradient. And this gradient is what determines what is see-through um, and what is solid, which the bottom and the top are, are solid, the bottom being more solid than the top. And um, also gave it a little bump to give it some of the regularity, so like a, um, a, a, a see-through piece of glass. And um, so that's a good start. Um, you can definitely enhance this by getting some more reflection um, and some and some additional effects. But uh, for me, it was all about render times, and uh, um, I wanted to keep this really going really fast in renders. Um, so another thing to notice too is that the way that the actual light ribbons were created, um, I used a very tall but thin. Uh, rectangle spline and use a sleep nerve around a um, the same light cycle path um, spline. Um, I also used a rail, which is at the top part, of it, which defined its which defined the light ribbon's height and lean when the light cycles were turning. And these are very powerful. Um, and it worked for the, the specific camera angles that I shot. However, as I'll show you in just a second, they weren't perfect. Um, they're far from it, actually. Um, well, here, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. And here's the camera angles, and the camera angles look pretty good. However, if we go outside the cameras, and we look around, Things are not perfect. Even when they start to lean, especially when they start to lean. See that? It's way off. And the same for the blue light cycle, too. They look good from the camera angles, but um, it was really hard to get them get them on perfectly, so I chose. I chose what looked good from specific camera angles, and I rendered it out from there. So, a little trickery, a little, like, cheating, but um, that's what I did to make them look good. And the the rails were used to create the bend in them. And this is one way to do it. I don't recommend doing it this way, um, which is why I'm not going to go into any more detail on this, um, for two reasons. One, because, as you can see, it didn't work out too well for me, uh, from all angles, just specific angles. And two, probably because you can probably find something better on this uh, from somebody else. If I were to do this again, I would not do it the same way. I would try to find something, an alternative. Um, so, okay. So, we want to go into next on how I composited this into After Effects. And it was pretty simple, but it might not be apparent for anyone new to Cinema 4D. And what I did was, when I saved the file, when I rendered it out, I also saved a compositing project file. And you can find this setting in your render, render settings under Save. If you expand this, you can choose your target application. The default is After Effects. Uh, so if we hit Save and include 3D data, we save the project file, it's going to save it as an AEC file. And inherently, the default install of, of After Effects does not know what to do with these AEC files. Um, but Maxon was 
very kind enough to include the plugin for After Effects to read these AC files and open up the composition. I'm going to show you what that's going to, what that looks like when we get to After Effects. Uh, so, so we're, we're going to talk about the compositing in just a second, and I've shown you how I built the light ribbons, which is pretty inefficient, and not very good. Um, one thing I want to do want to point out though is when I did composite these, I had issues with intersecting of the light cycles and the light ribbons. And the way I fixed this was I did two renders. The first render was with everything turned on, um, including the light ribbons, and that everything was on as normal. For the second render, I turned off the light ribbons and rendered, and rendered them out the same exact way. And in After Effects, I was able to use a mask I was able to mask out the the intersecting parts of the of the render without the light ribbons and it composite over very nicely and um, I'll show you that in just a minute. So we come over here to my After Effects project file and you'll see I have this is this is the raw render from Cinema 40 and you'll notice that the, inter the intersecting light ribbons are here on the white light cycle and You'll see this mask out. If I turn on the, no, the, the the secondary renders, now it's now it's gone, disappeared. And this mask is very quickly and easily rendered uh, animated across the entire animation. I turn it off to see if it's still interesting. So, and this was done pretty quickly. Um, it may look like it took a long time to render, but because I had such smooth camera movements and, you know, and, uh, 3D data from the Cinema 4D uh, export uh, 3D data option, it was actually very easy to render, or very easy to mask it out. Um, didn't take long at all. Might, might have taken about two hours for both for both life cycles on, on all three uh, camera angles. So that was that worked out pretty pretty well for that. Um, so if we so you obviously see that you know in in the the final video there were a lot of things added to it. Um, but before I show you the final composition, I'm going to show you how how to make sure that you're set up to read the AEC files that come from Cinema 4D's uh, export reading data option. So what you want to do is, if you've never done this before, we're going to go into the installation uh, folder of Maxon the Cinema, of Cinema 4D. And we're going to open up the file there, and we're going to go into this folder called Exchange Plugins. And in here are the plugins for each compositing program to be able to read it via AEC files. And we're going to go into After Effects under, of course, Windows. That's, that's what I'm using. Um, we're going to go into CS5, and there's the plugin. And we put that plugin into the After Effects. Uh, plugins directory, which would be located under Adobe uh, After Effects CS5, support files, and then plugins. And I put that there. Mm -hmm. And uh, make sure that you, if you, if After Effects is already open, make sure you start it so that it can read the, the plugin. And once you do that, you're all set to read the AAC files. And compositing from that point is pretty simple, and it's a lot of fun. Um, this because <laughs> you could see, you could say this is where the fun begins. Because once, once you open up the AEC file, once you open up the AEC file, it creates a composition for you. And inside this composition is the render that was done plus all the 3D data that we exported. And by default, Mac, uh, Cinema 4D exports lights and cameras. Um, so if you have any lights, it'll export lights into After Effects and you actually create a light, not a, not a null object. And also create a camera instead of a null object. Very, very powerful export. And all these, all this, all these, uh, all these objects that were exported have complete, uh, animated properties within them. They can also be modified too. And also take, they also take the, the, um, 
the settings from After Effects. So if you had 200, a light that was 250% uh, uh, luminance, um, this would be set to also 250%. Uh, but normally lights that powerful in After Effects don't, <laughs> don't really do you any good. But anyways, so we'll see that this is the masked out portion. And if we look at the same file, I've added a lot of different things to it, um, using, uh, especially using uh, Andrew Kramer's awesome, 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 awesome at, uh, optical flares that will really easily create these wonderful flares and assign them to specific lights. And I named the orange lights start with A and the B lights start with B, and I was able to very easily and very quickly put uh, put in some really awesome optical flares. Um, you'll notice all other things too. These sparks are also um, also from Andrew Kramer's Action Essentials too. Um, there were so, uh, there were sparks that I uh, tinted blue and white into their normal color. And what I did was when I brought them into 3D space, I positioned them around this null object, and this null object came from Cinema 4D. We open that back in the project file. This blue light cycle which we just saw in After Effects as a null object because of this tag, external compositing tag. And this tag can be found under, if you right-click on the object, go to Cinema 40 tags, and then external compositing. Anything with that tag will have its positional data exported into the the, uh, the external compositing uh, so, uh, the save file. So by default, we have cameras and lights being exported, but if you want anything else, any other positional 3D, 3D data also exported into the file, you need to make sure that, that the object has these compositing tags. Now, this is not to be confused with the compositing tag, <laughs> even though I just said that. Um, this is the external compositing tag. Make sure it has that. Um, you can also set it to create a solid at that point and um, make the size tool whatever you want if we were creating um, and if we were going to put an asset directly into there, we could create a solid with the size of our asset. Certainly doesn't need to do that, but um, that's definitely something that can be done too. So, now back into our After Effects, we'll, our After Effects project, we'll see that here's the sparks that I created for the blue light cycle. And what I did was I positioned them in 3D space to, to align with the, the null object containing the 3D data for the blue light cycle. And after I positioned it correctly, I parented it to that null object. And what, and at that point, it was completely positive, uh, composited into the, the scene. Now, it moved with the null object and it was, I didn't have to do anything else. It's like recolor it. And it just makes it, you know, utilizing that, that export 3D data function really, really helps you enhance your projects. Um, because when you render stuff from any 3D program, you're never done with it. There's always something you've got to do with it to enhance it, make it look better. And Cinema 4D has built-in functions to help you do that with After Effects. It's, it's really, really great that this, this is included within uh, Cinema 4D. So, obviously we have the lights that came from Cinema 4D um, that have the optical flares on it. We have the sparks that uh, have, been, have been parented to the null object after 3D compositing. We also have these um, these light reflections here. They're not really reflections, they're just, it's just a graphic, a bright graphic that I created um, in After Effects. Um, and this was actually um, composited in, in 3D space and then parented to the to the null object for the light cycle. Um, same thing over here on the on the orange light cycle, nothing different. And uh, with that, that's pretty much it. Um, did the same things for the explosions. Um, the only difference was that these the explosions did not have to be parented anything because they were they're stationed within um, within 3D space, so they're not really parented to anything. So what was done at the point of the explosion. 
all I did was position it correctly and then mask out the areas where you're not supposed to see it, which obviously this is a wall right here, so you can now sideways here. So and I, and I duplicated those um, those explosion assets on the floor and gave it some transparency to make it appear like it was reflecting. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, it was relatively easy once once I had the renders from Cinema 4D and and the compositing files from Cinema 4D. It was relatively easy and relatively quick to come into After Effects and add all these things that help sell the scene. Um, even though there's a lot of a lot of um, a lot of errors and, and, and things that should have been fixed prior. So I just wanted to hopefully uh, give you some insight on that and. Um, even though, if, even though you might have bad render, sometimes compositing can, can fix it or make it look like the errors are not even there. So always always keep in mind that um, when you render stuff from any 3D program, you're never done with it. Always make sure you bring it into a compositing program to to enhance it. And um, that's pretty much all I have to share. Um, if you have if you have some more questions on the, the Light Cycle project. Um, please put in the comments of this of this video, and I will. If you have any issues or or, or trying to get uh, trying to get the um, external compositing working from from uh, Cinema 4D into After Effects, uh, please comment as well too. And anything else you'd like to see? Um, this is my first tutorial, and it's not really a tutorial. It's just kind of showing you, um, giving you some insight on on how I built this 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 project file, this uh, life cycle animation. So um, please comment. Um, I'll be um, well, I'm looking forward to doing more tutorials, and so please comment. And um, I, I'm David Spooner with uh, Mindman Studios and uh, Angular Digital, and uh, I will see you all later.